So, in our talk about the all cranon fractures, we will start with an introduction. So, the all cranon process fractures are common injuries affecting the elbow joint. And they are common injuries because the olecranon is located subcutaneously where it is vulnerable to injury. And the olecranon process fractures are diagnosed clinically and by elbow x-rays and treatment is operative in most cases because the olecranon is attached to the triceps muscle and when there is an olecranon process fracture the olecranon is gonna get pulled by the triceps and it would get displaced that is why it has to be fixated by an operation moving on to talk about the mechanism of injury so in olecranon process fractures we have multiple mechanisms those include a low energy trauma like a fall on the outstretched hand or a fall on the elbow this might lead to a fracture in the olecranon a second mechanism is a high energy trauma to the elbow like in road traffic accidents and a third mechanism is a stress fracture due to long periods of stress on the bone in athletes now to really understand the olecranon process fractures first we have to understand the anatomy of the proximal ulna so the ulna is the medial and longer forearm bone so it is on the medial side of the forearm and you can see the ulna on these pictures so on the right picture we have a medial view of the ulna and on the left picture we have an anterior view of the ulna and the ulna has a big proximal end compared to the radius because the radius has a smaller proximal end and this is the proximal end of the ulna on those pictures and the ulna proximal end articulates with the humerus proximally and the head of the radius laterally so the proximal end of the ulna would articulate with the humerus here and with the radius on the lateral side and the ulna articulates with the humerus with two processes which are projections that comes out of the proximal ulna and those include the coronoid process which is on the anterior side here and the olecranon process which is on the posterior side here now the anterior process of the proximal ulna is the coronoid process which projects anteriorly and insert into the coronoid fossa during full elbow flexion so on the pictures that you can see right here this is the coronoid process on the anterior picture and this is the coronoid process on the medial view of the ulna now the coronoid process would insert into the coronoid fossa in the distal humerus during full flexion of the elbow so when we fully flex the elbow the coronoid process would insert into the coronoid fossa of the distal humerus now the posterior process is the olecranon which serve as a short lever for the extension of the elbow now you can see the olecranon process here on the anterior view of the ulna and here on the posterior view of the ulna and the olecranon process would insert into the olecranon fossa in the distal humerus during full extension of the elbow so when we fully extend the elbow the olecranon would insert into the olecranon fossa into the distal humerus now the olecranon and the coronoid processes form the walls of the trochlear notch which articulates 
with the trochlea of the humerus. So the coronoid process and the olecranon both form the trochlear notch that you can see right here on the anterior view and right here on the medial view of the ulna. And the trochlear notch would articulate with the trochlea of the distal humerus to form the elbow joint. Now, on the lateral side of the coronoid process is a smooth, rounded cavity which is called the radial notch and it is where the radial head articulates with the ulna. So, this is here is the radial notch. This is where the radius articulates with the ulna. Now, the triceps tendon inserts into the olecranon. So, it would insert into the olecranon here to help in elbow extension. And inferior to the coronoid process is the tuberosity of the ulna, which is the insertion of the brachialis tendon. So, inferior to the coronoid here, we have the tuberosity of the ulna, and this is where the brachialis muscle inserts to help in elbow flexion. And the shaft of the ulna is thick proximally, but its diameter diminishes as it continues distally. So the shaft of the ulna is thick proximally, but the thickness diminishes as it moves distally. Now those pictures here show the muscle attachment on the radius and ulna and here we can see that proximally on the ulna and on the anterior view we can see that the brachialis is inserting into the ulnar notch which is below the coronoid process as we mentioned and we also have the supinator muscle inserting medially on the anterior view of the ulna and we have the pronator teres inserting laterally on the coronoid process and we also have the flexor digitorum profundus inserting into the anterior part of the shaft of the ulna and on the posterior view we can see that the triceps is inserting into the olecranon process and we have the enconius inserting into the posterior part of the proximal ulna below the olecranon process. Now let's talk about the classification of the olecranon process fractures. So those fractures are classified according to the Mayo classification which is the most commonly used classification for the olecranon fractures and to classify these fractures according to displacement, comminution, and elbow joint stability. And Mayo classifies them on three types, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Now, type 1 in Mayo classification is the undisplaced olecranon process fractures. And type 1 is subclassified into A, which is the non-comminuted and displaced fractures, and it also subclassified into type 1, B, which is the comminuted and displaced olecranon process fractures. And on the left picture here, you can see the type 1, which is the non-comminuted and displaced olecranon process fractures, and on the right picture, you can see the, the undisplaced type B olecranon process fractures, which are the comminuted ones. Regarding type 2 of the Mayo classification, so in type 2 is where the displaced fractures are classified. And the fracture of the olecranon to be considered displaced, it has to be displaced for more than 3 millimeters. And in type 2 of the Mayo, this, the elbow joint is stable, so there is no elbow dislocation. And type 2 is also subclassified into A, non-comminuted, and B, comminuted. And on the left picture here, we can see the type 2A, which is the non-comminuted 
displaced olecranon fracture with a stable elbow. And on the right picture, we can see the type B, which is comminuted displaced olecranon fracture with a stable elbow. Now, type 3 in the Mayo is the same as type 2, so it is displaced fracture of the olecranon for more than 3 millimeters, but this time with dislocated elbow. So the difference between type 2 and type 3 is that the elbow joint is dislocated. And type 3 is also subclassified into A, which is non comminuted displaced olecranon fracture with dislocated elbow, and type B, which is comminuted displaced olecranon fracture with dislocated elbow. And the left picture here shows the type 3 A, and the right picture shows the type 3 B of the Mayo classification. Now let's talk about the clinical features of the olecranon fractures. So the symptoms include that the patient present with elbow pain and the patient can localize the pain to the posterior elbow. So the patient would point towards the pain and they will point to the posterior elbow they would say that they have the pain at the posterior elbow. And you think of olecranon process stress fracture if the patient gives a history of a pain during a long period of time. Regarding the physical examination, so we have look, feel, and move. So on looking, the elbow might be swollen. There might be ecchymosis on the posterior elbow and deformity might be present if there is associated elbow dislocation. So in Mayo type 3, deformity might be visible. And in feeling, there is tenderness on pressure over the posterior elbow, and the displaced fragment can be felt. And on moving, the patient can't extend their elbow against the gravity. Now let's talk about the imaging in olecranon fractures. So we order x-rays, we order an anterior posterior and a lateral elbow x-rays, and we note the fracture pattern, the fracture comminution, the presence of displacement, and the elbow joint condition, if the elbow joint was dislocated or not. And on this x-rays here, we have a lateral elbow x-rays and it shows an olecranon process fracture and this fracture is of two fragments and there is displacement so it would be classified as type 2a of the mayo classification and the ct scan is helpful in pre-operative planning moving on to talk about the emergency management in olecranon process fractures. So we give the patient pain management and in injuries associated with elbow dislocation, which is the Mayo type 3, the elbow should be reduced and an above elbow back slab and a collar and cuff or a sling is provided to the patient. So it is provided to Mayo type 1 and Mayo type 2 injuries and is also provided to Mayo type 3 after the elbow is reduced. Now let's talk about the definitive management. So the definitive management is either non-operative or operative and since most of these fractures are displaced due to the triceps pulling on the proximal fragment, this would lead to most of these fractures being treated operatively. But regardless, we have the non-operative option which is indicated if the olecranon fracture was a Mayo type 1. So a Mayo type 1 means undisplaced olecranon process fracture. And we make sure that the elbow x-rays should be taken when the elbow in flexion to make sure that there is no displacement. Because when we immobilize the fracture, we immobilize it on elbow flexion. So the x-rays has to be on elbow flexion. And non-operative treatment is also indicated 
in male type 2 in elderly patients. So those are patients who are older than 70 years old only. And that is because they have poor bone quality. And most of the times they have comorbidities. So surgery would hurt them. And the result of the non-operative treatment in these patients that the patient would lose some of the elbow extension power but that is much better than experiencing the operative complications at this age and the non-operative treatment consists of cast immobilization at 45 to 90 degrees and exercises are started after one week of immobilization now regarding the operative management, so indications of operation include the Mayo type 2 in patients younger than 70 years old. So they displace fractures with a stable elbow, which is the Mayo type 2 in patients younger than 70 years old, and all of the Mayo type 3 fractures, meaning all of the fractures with dislocated elbow, they has to be treated operatively. Now, the Mayo type 2A fracture, which is the non comminuted displaced olecranon fracture, is treated with tension band wiring, while the Mayo type 2B, which is the comminuted displaced olecranon fracture, and the Mayo type 3, which is the fracture dislocation, all treated with olecranon plating. And immediate post operative mobilization is recommended to prevent stiffness. Finally, let's talk about the complications. So complications of all coronal fractures include fixation hardware, irritation to the subcutaneous border of the all coronal, meaning irritation of the skin near the all coronal due to the fixation hardware, and that is a common complication. And complications also include elbow stiffness, which occur in 50% of the patients and elbow stiffness is minimized by early mobilization and complications also include non-union due to inadequate reduction or fixation and this is treated with open reduction internal fixation if the elbow function was bad but if the elbow function is good with non-union then it does not require treatment complications also include ulnar nerve symptoms which include tingling in the fourth and fifth fingers but those resolve spontaneously in most cases and complications also include osteoarthritis of the elbow joint this is a light complication it occur in 20 percent of the patients and it is due to incongruity between the trochlea and the trochlear notch and this is treated with analgesia and the final complication is wound infection after surgery and with that we reach the end of this video thank you guys for watching please give us a like and comment your ideas and questions and this video is a part of a bigger class it is called the elbow and forearm trauma masterclass please check it out link will be in the description